Over 2,000 miles directly south, training at altitude, is Lionel Sanders. down for a few minutes to make it three hours. The two meters are uh, reading the kicker 270, uh, 275 and the asioma is 276. So it just dropped one watt. So this will drop soon too. They're pretty well bang on. Push is good. Can have confidence in the data. So now, just a little quick bite to eat, and then we'll head to the gym for an equally, if not harder, run workout. I think Canada has done very well, done well above their, their size in triathlon, feed off of the energy of everyone out there and, and bring home the first title to Canada one of the sport's most revered athletes, who still believes his best years in triathlon are ahead of him. It's not a secret anymore, but it is a uh, Canadian tradition, yes. Maple syrup? Yeah. So like an hour recovery, just to have a bite, quick bite to eat hydrate a little bit and then we'll head to the gym and we'll do my biggest run workout of the year and uh we have fortunately a round of golf on the schedule tomorrow and uh pay-per-view tonight ufc fights for the light heavyweight championship so we got a lot of uh, motivation to get through it good so that we can enjoy the uh the rest of the time One hour and 90 minutes. Growing up in a small town of 3,000 people with nothing to do, the only thing to do is to do activities outside. Uh, but then I got into track and field very early on, and I got to high school. It was like expected that I would be a runner. And so, you know, because I was kind of falling out of running and, and, and that type of a sport, I just kind of replaced it with partying progressively more, and so then I went down that pathway for a few years. Almost losing himself to addiction in his earlier years would have robbed the sport of one of PTO's brightest lights. You know, I had just done that enough, and I was losing my sanity a bit. The only thing that was familiar to me that I felt confident and competent at was running. Both my mom and dad's side, uh, very musical. Uh, everyone, everyone played instruments, jammed. And so I had, you know, stack, probably six or seven electrics, three or four acoustics. And, you know, as a lot of people know, it's not the cheapest sport to get into, not a great sport to get into if you don't have any money. I had to liquidate some of that stuff. You know, you never forget things that uh, you feel slighted by, but a friend of mine didn't know I was still there and said something along the lines on the phone. I was in the, the bedroom with the door closed, probably having a nap. And he said, oh, that Lionel, he's got to get a real job. He's got to get his life together. And I was, you know, I, I, I was starting to get the, the seeds planted that, hey, this triathlon thing's pretty cool. And I, I think I might want to actually try and do this as a, as a real gig. From an outsider looking in, uh, you know, triathlon, how can you make money doing triathlon? How, that's not a real job. When someone says that about you, when you're starting to devote yourself to something, uh, you know, it's offensive. And so I was deeply offended. I opened the door and I said, F you. And then I closed the door. For a while there, absolutely, it was a motivation to, to prove the doubters wrong and to turn this into a real profession. Fit is everything. 
in my opinion. You need to find a bike that fits you well. That is your first task. How you doing? I just got the bike set up. I was about to send you a picture of it. Oh, nice. I think as soon as PTO put the opens on, on the schedule, Lionel made it a point to put them on his as well. Um, the, the competition is, I mean, insane. He feels that altitude is, you know, the final thing, um, not holding him back, but, you know, the final, the final piece to the puzzle. It is a pretty technical, uh, hilly course. Us kind of guys who come from behind having to do damage on the bike and then rely on guys destroying their legs due to the TT position and stuff. Unfortunately, we're not going to have a lot of that advantage in our direction. So it's going to be a tough one for us to do well. Um, we picked the windiest day ever, literally, to ride the race set up. I guess what surprises me most about Lionel as an athlete is just when, you know, we as his family and friends are, are feeling a little bit down if he's having a bad race or, you know, coming from behind and you think it might be over for him, he, he finds another gear, uncovers something within himself that, that we don't even know is there. And I think that's what his competitors fear the most in him when they get in a race with him. Um, it's just his, his willingness to suffer. Um, in any race. feel for sure the bar I've been spending the last 10 years honing this craft am I the most talented guy undoubtedly no do I have a shot due to my work ethic and my ability to push myself undoubtedly yes Look, the one thing I know about Lionel Sanders is you never, ever count him out. I have never seen an athlete that can push their limits like Lionel Sanders, not in short course, not in long course. He is an absolute animal. I, I don't feel any pressure. I feel like uh, nothing really is going to phase me at this stage. Everyone's been there to see it. Uh, my whole life has been out for the last 10 years in the public eye for the most part, my successes and failures. So. It doesn't, nothing faces me anymore. I mean, I've done it all for the most part. Lionel is, well, he at least portrays himself as someone who has no weaknesses mentally. He will push all the way to the end, no matter what. And he's done a really good job of creating that image and, and creating fear in all his competitors because everyone believes that he will sooner die than give up on the race course. Am I one of the greatest in the sport? Absolutely not. I, I believe I'm one of the best at pushing myself in the sport. In terms of overall ability, I am very far off the greatest. <laughs> I would say that experience has motivated most of my training to do that again. And every time I race him, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> Every time I get better in all three disciplines. So my first impression of Lionel Sanders was 2014, uh, world champ 70.3 in Montremblant. And he was a guy who everybody was talking about. Uh, his past was very much at the forefront of everybody's mind. He was just this beast of a guy who rode up on a squeaking bike. Once he had his feet on land, he was the quickest guy there. That moment is different for everyone, right? When you finally submit, realize that you, you, you need other people. You're part of a, a social sphere and you need the help of others and the wisdom of others to achieve what you want to achieve, to be who you want to be. You can't do it alone. He is making progress and I feel like of late, he's probably made the biggest progress in finally allowing somebody else into his professional life, like really allowing that person in. I just want him to be able to 
unlock his, his full potential as an athlete. Um, I think we're close. I think we're, we're approaching the years now where you're going to see the best version of him. Um, you know, ever since he started working with McCall, I think we've seen um, an upward trajectory. I'm a, I'm a Canadian living in America who's on Team Norway. I don't know how I, I, don't know how I got on into this, this situation. The training has changed in that I have definitely become more accountable, that I'm thinking about what's going on under the hood, like the more of the scientific underpinning, the physiological underpinning of the training I'm doing and how it affects what happens during a race. And that's something that I was deeply ignorant of. Training creates your racing. And I was sort of pushing my, my system into probably the wrong direction for the type of racing that I want to excel at. And Coach Mikal has helped me to correct that. You know, in terms of everything, he's somebody that inspires me on a daily level, on a daily basis to push harder and uh, and work into myself into a better shape. And I, I seem to do the same for him. He's wearing his effort on his sleeve, looking to his life right now to get splits. Come on, babe! He is absolutely rolling through a pack of men. I think Lionel is at a stage where he's always going to be a factor. Having that sort of magnitude of an event uh, at home is always unique and I, I, I truly wish him all the best for it. There's always a target on Lionel's back. He's got all the attention. Everybody knows Lionel. He wins a lot. I mean, he barely loses a 70.3 or a middle distance race. Um, so a lot of people are going to be watching him and, and he's used to that. So I'll, I'll expect him to come out firing all cylinders like he always does. For better or worse, Money attracts people, right? We need to, we need to, we need to eat, we need to provide for our families. And so the PTO is putting up, you know, actual amounts of money that we can survive off of. Literally, I'm going to a race where I've already spent more on my flights than first prize. So I am gonna lose money undoubtedly. How can, how's that a profession? How does that attract top tier talent? It doesn't and it won't and it never will. On the other hand, we're gonna start to go to races where the top tier is at. And, that, and this is what's gonna push the sport to a new level. And you know, these are the wins that are gonna be the most meaningful, not some win. I've won the North American Championship, I think 70.3, at least two or three times. And Keenlay was there. That's the only thing that made that race meaningful, beating Keenlay, having a good battle with Keenlay. Otherwise, being a North American champ, uh, completely irrelevant. Absolutely, it's getting harder. Every single year, I get better and better and better. My swim gets better. The deficit stays the same. Everything's, everything's getting better. It's great. It's fun. I mean, knowing everything that's gone into it, how much work and time and effort and dedication and how good these people are who you're racing. Once again, it always goes back to what makes something meaningful, the title, or the people, it's the people, you know what I mean? We could go to some race you've never heard of, no one's ever heard of, no one's ever been to, but if Jan and Gustav, Patrick and Christian are there and you get a W over them, that's all that matters. The title of the race is of no relevance, it's who's there. And that's the beauty of, of these, these events. Now the demons that were once upon his shoulders are hunted without mercy. Every workout, every competition, every day. Undoubtedly my best is still to come. I think three years from now, I will achieve my peak in triathlon. Now an evolved athlete. Unfortunately, I'm one of those people who uh, thinks I know everything, doesn't like to be told what to do, and I had to do my own thing. Lots of people told me this and that, and had I just listened to them, I'd be so much further ahead now, but do I have regrets that I didn't listen? No, because here I am now and doing what I love you know, I'm, I'm part of the game now. He is preparing to bring the hammer down among the elites in Edmonton. The golden era is coming. Very good, very, very well-rounded athletes who are crazy hard workers, who are mentally tough, who can handle large amounts of volume, et cetera, et cetera, are coming to fruition. Think of how much more meaningful it'll be to, to get a victory on one of these guys. The biggest threat is Gustav, I don't know, Lionel maybe? He has one podium at a world championship, so he wins races, but he wins the less important races. 
Fuck you, buddy, your time's coming. There's no more time to mess around. And if there was ever a time for you to excel and to upset this whole thing, it's now, the next couple of years. So let's do it. There's always a target on Lionel's back. Lionel Sanders told us that he's been working on his swim. He was almost embarrassed at what happened at Daytona. You let up, I will find you. I take pride in it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's keep it up. Come on, let's see it. Let's go.